So welcome to part 7, where we finally explore Orkson, the very planet behind everything in this game. And guess what? <laughs> exactly. It's a clank planet. So we need an O2 mask just to get here as Ratchet, so... We're gonna have to play through all this as Clank. This is probably one of my least favorite planets to go through. Simply for the fact that it's so slow. So I guess it's very easy to say it's really boring to play through. But I've got other issues besides it, besides it being boring. Well, I think I'll explain about that later. Obviously, if you haven't noticed, there's a platform right there leading to an alternate path we can't get to as Clank because obviously he is not a platformer character. And as it says, an O2 mask is needed for organic beings, aka Ratchet, so yes, we're going to be coming back here as Ratchet. My feelings with his part of this planet is not any better than this one. But yes, this planet is very much like any other Clank section we have played. All one of them. Yeah, I think there was only one. I don't remember anymore. <laughs> Memory's not one of my finer points. Gadgetbots can't climb, but you can use your enter command to send them into the platform. So yes, this is the new gimmick of this planet with Gadgetbots. They can teleport if you lead them into these. Yeah, that's about it. If you've seen the previous ones, it's just a test to make sure you know how to properly play as Clank. And as you can notice here, there's a path we can't enter because, well, it's an alternate path. That clank does no means of getting through. You have to get through the other side. Fortunately, though, I believe you cannot get there as clank. In fact, uh, you don't. So, yeah, yeah just ignore that for now. You weren't meant to see that. Even though I decided to show it off. If you haven't noticed that slight hint of red down there, that is very much a lava pit. Don't fall in there, obviously. Once again, more paths. Just outright telling you, hey, this is all ratchet stuff. Like, this level is being really blatant with that now. Okay, I'm really giving off the hints here. Sorry if there's not much to say here. This is really just per the part. There's nothing new here. This is all just... The now, these clank sections aren't that interesting here. I mean, what am I supposed to say? You fight almost the exact same enemies. And... Yeah. I mean, I guess I had some slight enjoyment playing the previous Clank section, but this one is just... It's just a lot of... Ugh. It's just not a whole lot to say. I mean, I guess I could pull something out, but then that requires this... Taking off my headphones and... Ruining my setup here. Maybe next time when... Oh yeah, not to mention that the Ratchet and Clank instruction manual is in fact a poster as well. Which makes pulling it out much more frustrating than it needs to be. So that's why I haven't pulled it out at all. It gives you a basic plot summary and everything. So enjoy your new poster I guess if you have it. I mean, I'm not gonna do anything like that. <laughs> it's like a, 
it's a nice poster except for the fact that if I ever feel like uh, putting it on the wall, I lose out on instruction manual, so I'm not doing anything like that. Of course, the game does that. Apparently, they're not capable of going through until they feel like it. <sighs> well, since I need to so say something... I'll explain the thing that's pretty obvious on its own already. There are these platform- <laughs> Well, I guess they are, but they're more like buttons, where you press on them and you open the doors, and that's how you progress past these gates. This one just as simple as pressing one button. This one requires you to actually get a weight. Simple as that, you can get them through. As long as you're thinking logically, it shouldn't be too hard. I mean, these aren't exactly, uh, that tough. I mean, for a game filled with adult humor, there's stuff like this that any kid could solve. Well, I think that's most likely just because the real difficulty was placed into all the ratchet stuff and not this clank stuff. I mean, that's not to say this stuff can get pretty difficult, but maybe for different reasons. Like, later on the levels will get start getting a bit more difficult as Ratchet, but for Clank here, they, they're really just brain teasers sometimes. And if not, they're just a bit frustrating to play through. You're, you're slow. You gotta carry these very, very weak and fragile gadget bots. It's, it's all sorts of stuff. Oh, and don't forget to set off this TNT line here, because if you don't, you'll lose out on all that hard work you just spent for the last few two minutes, something, I don't know. <laughs> of course. I gotta go and take a check, cause look who's not joining along. I was lucky that was only one of them there. If that was all of them, yeah, it would require restarting the whole puzzle again and ugh. But no, this is not the most frustrating part of the client section here, there's one coming up later. So we just got this one to go through. <laughs> yeah, another classic instance of, you could fit through there, but you can't. Like, that's a pretty little detail to miss out. And look at that, we already found another collectible item. Probably just what we need for Vitalia. These Magna Boots are a device designed for climbing special metal surfaces. However, your feet appear to be too small to equip them. Oh, that isn't saying something about Ratchet. Yeah, I don't know what is. Well, this platform back will bring us back down to the beginning of the... Well, where the ship is. So, if you want to immediately give them to Ratchet, go ahead, but... I think it's a little more efficient just to... Uh, Keep going. Now this is the frustrating part here. Somewhere out of these walls are these mines coming out. So you're supposed to stay away from the center because you don't want to get yourself killed and you certainly don't want to get the magic gadget bots to be destroyed. For my last run, which wasn't this one by the way, I have to waste so much time just trying to go through here as 
My gadget bot just got destroyed by these things. Maybe it was just me being careless, not playing the game in a long time, but I don't think in my practice run I suffered that badly. So yeah, you gotta be a bit careful where you place your gadget bots if you tell them to wait. Or not have them wait at all if you want, but that's a little risky. So yes, yeah, so if you lose any of the gadget bots, they're back here. If you happen to get farther along without having realized your mistake, yes, you have wasted a bunch of time. And that's where they're coming from, I guess. So now you gotta deal with the snake-like things. These ones are more manageable than the bombs. As long as that doesn't happen with your gadget bots. If they happen to be not synced up at the wrong time, you get issues like this and... Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't want to cooperate. For some reason, your gadget bots do not have the ability to fall through. This can be a bit useful for, you know, not losing all sorts of progress, but this becomes a problem later when Clank is also on the bottom and you want them to follow you, but no, they gotta stick to where they are. So it looks like I made it through here just fine. This is probably the last frustrating section for Clank. Well, provided the checkpoints are generous. I mean, I don't think I recall ever actually dying in these parts. At the very least, I've only recalled dying because I got careless around one of those big enemies that you can't kill as Clank. But yeah, if you do not have enough gadget bots when you get to that point, be prepared to go all the way back to the beginning because I don't think there's any gadget bots right there waiting for in the middle. Look at this. There's a whole war zone area here. This one's a whole lot more manageable if your gadget bots get destroyed, which most likely will happen when you play this, as is indicated right now. For some reason though, I think they only target about one or two enemies and they immediately go back to you. So, this can be a little annoying to deal with. I'm not think too frustrating. And at the very least, they give you enemies that even Clank can manage. So, this part isn't too frustrating, ironically. The final part. It doesn't look like they're already set to follow you. So yeah, if you lose some, you gotta go back and find them. But luckily, just pressing the follow command once just works fine. Look at that. All done. That wasn't so hard. Look at that, looks dangerous, except for the fact that you can't even go through this. So yeah, you gotta get your little gadget bot buddies to kill the tur- whatever those enemies are. I don't think you ever fight them in, to begin with in the whole entire game. They only appear there, as far as I'm aware. And that's that. <laughs> Finally got ourselves a game. An info bot to pro progress through. Well, that was only about 14 and a half minutes of Clank. Hope you enjoyed it, because I don't think we'll get anything like this again for a while, if ever. Hmm. 
Better not let Ratchet see this one. Oh, we finally got our sight set for a new planet. And if you're wondering, if you go back to Battalia, there's nothing, there's no new info by. This is the only way you can progress. Just spelling it out. Hey! You giving me these or not? They are magnetic. I appear to be stuck to them. Oh. What do you have in there? Gears, metal filings, dust. You know what I mean. What is it? I will show you this, but you must promise to stay focused on our mission. Is it something about Quark? Cities are full of smog, swamps are full of muck, and tar pits are full of tar. But here at Joe I Resort, the sun shines 24 hours a day. Visitors get a free O2 mask to explore our warm waters. The benign marine life will welcome you to the big blue world under the sea. Uh, you can also use our complimentary flippers to partake in speed swimming. <laughs> so come to Joe I Resort and leave your world and your troubles behind. Joy Resort, Pokitaru. I knew it. Oh, come on. Switch off your nerd circuits and have some fun. Look, we'll go just long enough to pick up the O2 mask. Perhaps the extra oxygen will help your brain to function properly. Yeah, and maybe the salt water will rust your mouth shut. Hmm. Oh, wasn't that an interesting development? Well, unfortunately, we're not going to the Pokitaru. So, back to Battaglia. Got some unfinished business there. So if you're wondering, this whole entire section here is optional, unless you really, really want to get a lot of bolts. As I do. Well, actually, more considering the format here, I have to show off everything, otherwise be labeled as lazy. I mean, you gotta do stuff to set set yourself apart from the other let's players these days in fact maybe calling this a let's play would probably be a detriment in the long run but i've got no better ideas i've got no brand to associate like maybe zero plays or something but no i can't do that like i might get i might have over 2000 subs but i'm pretty sure not, almost none of them are dedicated to this series I'm putting out here at all. There's probably one dedicated subscriber and that's Justin, of course. That is unless YouTube unsubscribed from me, him from me again. Of course, if you got anyone to blame for the fall schedule for this playthrough, you got him to blame. I was expecting something in the fall, so I did exactly as he wished. I mean, I could have gotten this out maybe a month sooner, but nah. Gotta follow through his example. And would you look at that? This bolt crank. You finally set it out, it all it does is just extend a bridge. No, no ceremony at all, nothing. Just you set it out and that's it. I believe once you get to this point, you, you already get like a taxi that takes you back here instantly. So this whole entire trip was, that whole, yeah, that whole bridge is pointless to begin with. Unless you just really wanted a quick way back there. In that case, go ahead, but you probably got that stuff sorted out sooner. And look at that tank. Always the best part of the day. Unfortunately, we got no sound mouse buddy to help us with this, so... I gotta play a hard ball game to get rid of these guys. And that's why I was you send out too much and too much of the glove of doom, which get these enemies that don't come out. Well, I guess they're enemies to them, but whatever. Oh, 
I don't know what's taking me so long to get this thing open, but yeah, that was so quick. I don't think we'll get anything that short again for a long time, so uh, cherish it. In fact, I'm willing to believe it was just a fluke. But yeah, it wasn't that exciting. There's this whole area that they... <laughs> yeah, I think that's everything, except for this part. Hey, I know you two. Look, the plumber's back. Very funny. What are you doing here, sir? Maintenance. What else? I helped fix this planet's useless air defenses. Well, I think you'd better hurry up. The turret works fine, you little yahoo. It's the locals. They haven't got the skilled manpower to use it. I'm a pretty good shot. You? No, I could lose my job. Oh, come on. What's the sense of keeping up a turret if nobody's going to use it? Besides, the Blarg chased you off the last planet. Why don't we pay him back? Well... All right, go on if you want. Just don't break anything. Here's a new unique section. You can finally enter this turret, but not through the traditional way. Like if this were a spiral game, they would have they would have had an opening for a spire to go through. But then again, they would have made you talk to the NPC just to say yes, I want to use the turret, and then you would make you automatically hop in. This game just skips the chase. You just press triangle, and you're already here without you know anything to show you going in. Anyway, this part's as simple as it looks. Shoot the Blark ships. Shoot the rockets they come out so they don't kill you. In the bottom left there is your health. It may look like we finally got a health bar, but in reality it's just a few hits. Nothing special. So I think like maybe four or five hits and you're dead. Dirt doesn't get destroyed, but you get knocked out and the plumber has to wake you up. You know, it's a whole unique cutscene if you lose. I don't want to show it off because it's... I mean, it's a losing condition. Yep, this is as simple as it looks. Just keep shooting. Don't get shot. So, I also didn't explain the radar on the bottom right there, but I think you could have gotten a hint by now. You know, orange, bad, white, missile. Center U grid lines because yeah this wasn't a whole interesting planet was it <laughs> I mean we got a draft dodger the commander who left or was it a general I forgot already whatever the case you got two locals and that's it well 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 Looks like he's good for something after all. Here, take this. What is it? It detects underground bolts. My grandfather designed it to suck up loose change on any planet in the galaxy. What a cheap old man he was. Well, see you around sometime. Since you now own the metal detector, a bolt icon will show up on screen whenever you are near a buried stash of bolts. When equipped, the metal detector will give you signals to indicate your proximity to the buried bolts. The detector plate will always indicate the direction to the bolts. Hold down the circle button to activate the device. As you move closer to the bolts, the rings will become redder and the beeping will become faster. Continue holding down the circle button and once you are directly over the bolts, the metal detector will suck them out of the ground. Oh, that's uh, one way to get players to replay the previous levels. If you want to get a lot of bolts, and hopefully get everything in the game. That's your only, uh, things your only hope. I mean, that's what I did, ended up doing when I got this gadget. I mean, what else is there to say? It's a metal detector and they explained everything. So yes, if you want to get everything in the game on your first playthrough, beyond the Rhino, of course, you've got to use this thing and go back. That may seem like a pain to go through all that again, but uh, trust me, the levels are a little easier to manage the second time around. And I mean the payoff's worth it. You get a lot of bolts if you go back and get everything again. 
So consider it an investment. But otherwise, if you don't care for that, you can just ignore Battaglia. And just have it just for its info bot. I mean, there's nothing else I do with progress here in this whole entire video. I just happened to cut out a bunch of grinding, I believe, for bolts. So yeah, thank you for watching part 7. See you in part 8 where we actually make some progress here beyond an info bot and a gadget or two.